Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at integration by parts. I really love using this and I hope you do too. I'll start by showing you the formula, talk you through it a little bit, and then we're going to do six examples. Four of them will be indefinite integration and two of them will be definite integration using limits. Also, a couple of them are exam style questions. So grab a pen and paper, do the work yourself and pause and rewind as you need to work at your own pace. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. So this is the formula for integration by parts. It's good to know this off by heart. Um, I'll just talk through it quickly and then we'll use it in examples. That's the best way for it to be clearer. Um, I use this language here where I use dashes to show when something's been differentiated. So a V dash and U dash means, um, or V prime, U prime, whatever you like to call it. Um, that means the derivative of V and U. So here you've got um, U, at any sort of term, multiplied by the derivative of V. So whenever you've got the situation where you're trying to integrate something multiplied by the derivative of something else. So what you're really looking for is a situation when two things are being multiplied together. Uh, one of them you can treat as being already differentiated and the other one not. So the way to integrate that is to use this formula. So um, taking whatever you've called your u and v, multiplying them together and taking away the integral of um, them the opposite way around. So v times the, in the derivative of u. Let's work that through with some examples. Okay, here we've got the first question and I've just put the uh, formula up in the top right corner just so we can remember it. Um, so here's the first example and notice that it looks horrendous, there's no other way to integrate this really. Um, the other methods, if you tried them, you wouldn't get very far. Uh, but here we've got 6x squared being multiplied by ln x, there's two things being multiplied together. So already it looks a bit like that, but we just need to decide which one's going to be the u and which one's going to be the v dash. Which one of them would be helpful to treat as already being differentiated? Well, 6x squared, we can either differentiate or integrate, that, so that one is pretty flexible. But log of x, um, you can't actually integrate that very easily. In actual fact, you can integrate log of x, and I'll show you how in this video actually, um, but it's not easy. So it's a good idea, instead of integrating that, to differentiate it. So we're going to treat that as our u, because then we can differentiate it to get u dash. And that means that this one can be our v dash. So what I do is write to the side u and u dash, and v and v dash. So we've decided to make u log of x meaning that v dash is the 6x squared. Now we need to fill in the rest of the information. So we want u dash, which means we differentiate that, and hopefully you know that's 1 over x. Now we want v. So we've already got the derivative 6x squared. We want to go the opposite way. We want to integrate that. So that's a straightforward integration. Hopefully you can do that without too much problem. 2x cubed. Now that we've filled in those pieces, we're just putting them into the formula. So we've got u times v, that's log of x times 2x cubed. I'm going to write the 2x cubed first, just because that's convention. And then minus the integral of v u dash, so 2x cubed times, um, I'll just put a dot for times, 1 over x with respect to x. So the idea behind integration by parts is to force it into a form where what you've got left to integrate should be okay. So we can simplify this first, we're dividing by x, so we can simplify that to 2x squared. And so that stays the same at the front, and now we want to integrate that again, it should be a straightforward integration. And because this is indefinite, there are no limits, we need the plus C. Great, hope that's clear. Um, if you need to rewind and have a go at that yourself, please do. Otherwise, we'll do another example. Okay, second example. So here again, we've got something that looks really difficult to integrate. But we've got two things that are multiplying together. Um, this time, uh, both of them you could differentiate or integrate. So 
it's not like the last one where it's quite so obvious which one to make which. But notice the 3x here. If you differentiate that, you would just be left with 3. And that would get rid of an x. And that's a really helpful thing. Because then what you'd be left to integrate would be much easier. So we're going to differentiate that one. Which means we're going to make that u. Um, and then that one will have to be v dash. Okay, so let's put in the information and hopefully that will be clearer. So we're saying that 3x is our u and that means that we can differentiate it. So we're left with just 3 and that's a really nice thing to do. Um, v dash then will be e to the minus x and integrating that backwards. So we'll have e to the minus x and divide by the derivative of minus x which is minus 1. So it'll be minus e to the minus e x. Okay, then putting that into the formula, so u times v, we've got these ones multiplied together, I'm going to put the minus at the front, 3x e to the minus x. Okay, and then we're taking away the integral of v u dash, so these ones multiplied together. So can you see what I mean? Now we're integrating something where we've dropped the x. Um, so getting rid of that x by differentiating is a really good thing because that, now that is much easier to integrate directly. Uh, just to make it easier, I'm going to pull the minus into the front um, before I integrate that, just so we don't make any mistakes with the signs. And we need the plus c. Great, well done if you're getting that. Um, differentiating and integrating e to the x or e to a function um, is in one of my other, I think, differentiation videos. So um, if you're not sure about that, do check that out. Okay, third example is a juicy one. <laughs> um, trig always makes things interesting, doesn't it? Um, so trying to decide which way round to make these u and v dash. Um, x squared, if you differentiate it, well, if you differentiate it twice, you'll get rid of the x. Um, cos, it, when you differentiate, it will, it'll just alternate between sine and cos when you differentiate and integrate. So that's not really going to change an awful lot. So it's best to differentiate that one. So we'll make that u and we'll make this one v dash. And what is going to happen? Well, actually, I won't tell you yet. <laughs> we'll find out. So u is x squared. We'll differentiate that to get 2x. Uh, v dash is cos, and we need to integrate that back to get sine. Using the formula, u times v, and then minus the integral of v u dash. A lot of the time with maths, you're just trying stuff and playing with it and seeing what works. <laughs> so if you weren't sure, if you could just try that and then see what happens. Uh, let's see what we've got. Notice that this integral here, it looks easier to integrate than this did, <laughs> but it's still not. we're still not quite in a position we can integrate it because we've still got an x. So that one we had x squared, this one we've got x, so we're a step closer. What we really want is just a number times sine x um, to be able to integrate that. So what we're going to do is use integration by parts again. We're going to apply it again to this part here. Fun times. <laughs> so if we make the 2x u and the sine x v dash, then when we differentiate 2x, we'll lose the x. You can actually use integration by parts as many times as you want. <laughs> Just have a great time. But um, generally in A-level, you'll only be expected to do it up to a maximum of two times, hopefully. So let's make that 2x, and u dash then will be 2. v dash now is sine x, and just being really careful about um, the negative sign when you integrate that back you'll get a negative cos because um, when you differentiate cos it changes the sign sign of sign <laughs> okay so we've still got that beginning bit there x squared sine x um, and I'm going to put minus and then all of this in brackets because that minus needs to apply to all of it so let's now use the um, integration by parts formula again so uv will be minus 2x cos x Minus the integral of that stuff there. Now we can integrate that directly. So still with this stuff here. 
I'll remove the brackets now and change that to a plus. And integrating that, we'll get minus sine x and plus c. Okay, third example. Uh, I said I'd show you how to integrate log. <laughs> I like this because it's it's just really clever. Um, so this is a trick you can pull if you are faced with something that you can't really integrate. So um, log of x, it doesn't have a straightforward integral. You, it feels like something you can't integrate, but you can using integration by parts as a clever trick. So what we're going to do is sneak in one times log of x and then because you can't um, integrate log of x uh, easily directly we're going to instead differentiate it by calling it u and then the 1 will be the v dash. Isn't that sneaky? So then we're integrating log of x to get 1 over x and the v dash is 1. Integrating that back we just get x. Now we can use the formula so we've got x times 1 over x, which of course is just 1. And integral of 1 is x. Beautiful. Some people just learn that that's the integral of log of x, but I think that's so fun, you should just do it yourself. Okay, always practicing more trig, and this time we're going to have limits. So I'll show you how to use them in the integration by parts. Um, using definite integration. So same thing to start with, we're going to label it up with u and v dash. Um, here the x, we'll make that u because if you differentiate it you'll just get 1, so you drop the x, that's really handy as we know. And that means that sine of 2x is our v dash. Just snuck in a minus there, <laughs> don't forget that. Okay, using the formula. So the first bit, the uv, um, I'm going to put that in the square brackets because that doesn't need integrating again now. It's already sort of been integrated. So putting the limits on the end. I've got a minus and a minus here, so I'm going to pull that out and make it a plus. integral of that there and now because it's all been integrated I can put the whole lot in the square brackets I should really have written the limits on here as well it's just a lot of writing isn't it um, good now we can do one minus the other uh, so cos of 2 lots of pi over 2 will be cos of pi um, hopefully you know that without using a calculator and when we put pi over 2 into here we'll have sine of pi hopefully you know that's zero now putting zero into all of this we'll have half times zero so that's just zero and there's um, plus a quarter sine of zero and a sine of zero is zero lots of zeros going on um, sine of pi is zero. <laughs> Love it when that happens. So we're just left with this here. Cos of pi is minus one. So that will times with the minus at the front. So we'll get a positive quarter pi or pi over four. Nice. And that was actually pulled out of a past exam paper. So that gives you an idea of the standard. Let's do one more question to finish. Okay, last one. Have a go at as much of this as you can yourself. Um, I'm going to make the log of 2x, I'm going to make that the u, because as we know it's not very easy to directly integrate. The x to the half can be the v dash. So when you differentiate this you'll get 2 over 2x, so that's just 1 over x. Integrating. Here I've multiplied the v and the u dash together and the u dash is 1 over x so I've just uh, divided by x 
Um, so that's taking one off the three over two to leave just a half in the power. Okay, putting in the limits. Totally run out of room, so I'm just going to have to change it on this line. But anyway, uh, we've got log of two here. We want to clean up and um, collect stuff together. Log of two and log of eight. But notice you can write log of eight. Uh, eight is the power of two clever um, and then we can bring the power down to the front which would be three times all of that which would leave us with 16. We can also get rid of the brackets if we change that one to a plus. Now we can collect the logs and collect the fractions. So I get 46 over 3 log 2 minus 28 log 9. Of course, the temptation, isn't it, um, is to put all of this in your calculator and it would give you a decimal answer probably. Um, so if you're being asked for something in a certain form like a log 2 plus b or um, it wants it in an exact form, then you will have to be able to do some of that working yourself. Of course, using the calculator to check steps and things, but you need to be able to follow through that logic. Great, well I hope that was helpful. Please do carry on practicing with lots of different examples. Um, if you want more information um, about online tuition, you can go to my website starfishmaths.com or get in touch starfishmaths at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.